Passion Travel is a channel specializing in all things travel street food and subscribe if you like the content. Brichettes. Grilled skewers of meat, often beef, goat, or chicken, seasoned with spices. Brichettes are a popular and beloved street food in Rwanda, as well as in many other countries. These grilled skewers typically consist of small pieces of marinated meat, often beef, goat, or chicken, that are seasoned with a flavorful blend of spices. Brichettes are known for their smoky aroma and delicious taste, making them a common choice among locals and visitors alike. Ingredients and Preparation The preparation of brichettes involves several key steps. Meat Selection The meat used for brichettes is typically chosen from lean cuts like sirloin or tenderloin for beef, or boneless chicken or goat. The meat is cut into small, bite-sized pieces. Marination The meat is marinated to infuse it with flavor and tenderness. The marinade often includes a mixture of ingredients like garlic, ginger, onions, vegetable oil, lemon or lime juice, and a blend of spices. The specific spice blend can vary but may include ingredients like cumin, coriander, paprika, and chili powder for some heat. Skewering. After marinating, the meat pieces are skewered onto long sticks or metal skewers, typically alternating with vegetables such as bell peppers, onions, and tomatoes for added flavor and color. Grilling. The skewers are grilled over an open flame, charcoal, or a grill until the meat is cooked to perfection. The grilling process imparts a smoky flavor and creates a delicious charred exterior while keeping the meat tender and juicy on the inside. Serving and enjoyment. Brichettes are typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone snack. Brichettes are often served as a quick and satisfying snack, making them a popular street food option. Main dish. They can also be served as a main course, often with a side of rice, fried plantains, or bread. Sauce. Brichettes are commonly served with a dipping sauce, which can vary from region to region but may include spicy chili sauces, peanut sauces, or yogurt-based sauces. Garnishes. Fresh herbs, such as cilantro or parsley, may be sprinkled over the brichettes before serving for added freshness. Cultural significance. Brichettes are a cherished part of Rwandan cuisine and street food culture. They are a reflection of the country's love for grilled meats and the use of flavorful marinades and spices. Brichettes are often enjoyed at local markets, roadside stalls, and social gatherings, making them a flavorful and convenient way to experience the vibrant street food scene in Rwanda. Chapati. Flatbreads that are soft and slightly crispy, often served with meat or vegetable fillings. Chapati is a type of unleavened flatbread that is popular not only in Rwanda but also in many parts of East Africa and South Asia. In Rwanda, chapati is a beloved street food and accompaniment to various dishes. It's known for its soft, flaky, and slightly crispy texture. Ingredients and preparation. The ingredients for making chapati are simple and typically include flour. All-purpose wheat flour is commonly used. Water. Lukewarm water is used to create the dough. Salt. A small amount of salt is added for flavor. Oil or ghee. Oil or clarified butter, ghee is used to make the chapati soft and flaky. Steps. Mixing. The flour and salt are mixed together in a bowl, and then lukewarm water is gradually added to form a dough. Kneading. The dough is kneaded until it becomes smooth and elastic. This step is essential to develop the gluten in the flour. Dividing. The dough is divided into small, equal-sized portions, often into rounds or balls. Rolling. Each portion is rolled out into a thin, flat circle using a rolling pin. The use of oil or ghee during rolling helps make the chapati flaky and prevents sticking. Cooking. The rolled-out chapati is cooked on a hot, dry griddle or skillet. It's cooked on both sides until it puffs up and develops golden-brown spots. Stacking. Once cooked, chapatis are often stacked on a plate, and a little oil or ghee may be brushed between the layers to keep them soft and prevent sticking. Serving and enjoyment. Chapati is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone bread. It can be served as a standalone bread to accompany various dishes. Wrap or roll. Chapati is often used to make wraps or rolls with fillings such as grilled meats, vegetables, and sauces. Side dish. It can be served as a side dish with stews, curries, or other main courses. Breakfast. In some cases, chapati is enjoyed as a breakfast bread, often with tea, eggs, or other accompaniments. Cultural significance. Chapati has cultural significance as a versatile and widely enjoyed bread in Rwanda and beyond. 
It's a symbol of sharing and communal eating, often seen at family gatherings, celebrations, and as a quick and tasty street food. The skill of making chapati is passed down through generations, making it a cherished part of Rwandan cuisine. Mataka. Steamed and mashed green bananas, often served as a side dish. Mataka is a traditional East African dish that is especially popular in Rwanda, Uganda, and other neighboring countries. It is made from green cooking bananas, specifically the East African Highland banana variety, which is firm and starchy when unripe and sweet when ripe. Mataka is often prepared as a stew and is known for its rich, savory flavors. Ingredients and preparation. The key ingredients for making mataka include green cooking bananas. These bananas are peeled, often by making a lengthwise slit and removing the skin, and then sliced into rounds or chunks. Aromatics. Ingredients like onions, garlic, and ginger are commonly used to create the flavor base for the stew. Tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes or tomato paste is used to create a tomato-based sauce. Spices and seasonings. A blend of spices can include ingredients like curry powder, chili peppers, paprika, cumin, and bay leaves, among others. Liquid. Water or broth is added to create a stew-like consistency. Steps. The preparation of mataka typically involves the following steps. Sautéing. Onions, garlic, and ginger are sautéed in oil until fragrant and translucent. Spices. Spices and seasonings are added and toasted briefly to release their flavors. Tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes or tomato paste is added to create the tomato-based sauce. The mixture is simmered until the tomatoes break down and the sauce thickens. Bananas. The sliced green bananas are added to the sauce, along with water or broth. The mixture is simmered until the bananas are tender and the sauce is well incorporated. Seasoning. The dish is seasoned with salt and pepper to taste. Serving and enjoyment. Mataka is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone dish. It can be served as a main course on its own, often accompanied by rice, pasho, maize porridge, or another staple. Side dish. Mataka can also be served as a side dish to complement grilled meats, fish, or other dishes. Garnishes. Garnishes such as cilantro, parsley, or sliced green onions may be added before serving. Cultural significance. Mataka holds cultural significance as a staple food in Rwanda and other East African countries. It reflects the use of locally sourced ingredients and the blending of flavors and techniques that are characteristic of East African cuisine. Mataka is often served at family gatherings, celebrations, and special occasions, and its preparation and sharing bring communities and families together. Ibahaza. Grilled maize, corn, on the cob, often brushed with chili sauce or butter. Ibahaza is a traditional Rwandan dish that features grilled or roasted maize, corn, on the cob. This simple yet flavorful street food is a popular snack and is enjoyed by people of all ages in Rwanda. Preparation. The preparation of ibahaza is quite straightforward. Selecting fresh maize. Fresh and tender maize, corn, on the cob is chosen. The husks are usually removed to expose the kernels. Marination or seasoning. Depending on personal preferences and regional variations, the maize may be brushed with a seasoned mixture before grilling. The seasoning can include ingredients like salt, chili powder, lime or lemon juice, and sometimes oil or butter. Grilling or roasting. The maize is typically grilled or roasted over an open flame, on a barbecue grill, or sometimes even in an oven. The heat caramelizes the natural sugars in the maize, giving it a smoky and slightly sweet flavor. Turning. The maize is turned periodically to ensure even cooking and to prevent burning. Serving. Once the maize is cooked and has taken on a golden color with charred spots, it is ready to be served. Serving and enjoyment. Ibahaza is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in a few different ways. Standalone snack. Grilled maize on the cob is often enjoyed as a standalone snack, especially by street food vendors. Accompaniment. It can also be served as a side dish or accompaniment to grilled meats, brochettes, skewers, or other main dishes. Seasonings. Maize can be customized with various seasonings and condiments, including chili sauces, salt, lime or lemon juice, or even grated cheese. Cultural significance. Ibahaza is a popular street food in Rwanda and is often sold by street vendors, especially in bustling markets and during local festivals. It represents a simple yet delicious snack that showcases the country's use of locally grown maize and its culinary culture.
Enjoying Ibahaza is a shared experience that brings communities together, and it's a cherished part of Rwandan street food culture. Nyama Choma. Grilled meat, usually goat or beef, seasoned with spices and served with a side of vegetables. Nyama Choma is a popular East African dish, particularly in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda. The term, Nyama Choma, translates to, grilled meat, in Swahili, and the dish lives up to its name, as it is primarily composed of grilled or roasted meat. It's a beloved street food and social dish often enjoyed in a communal setting. Ingredients and Preparation The main ingredient for Nyama Choma is typically meat, most commonly beef, goat, or chicken. The preparation is relatively straightforward. Meat selection. Fresh cuts of meat, such as beef or goat, are chosen. These cuts are often well marbled and flavorful. Marination. The meat may be marinated with a simple mixture of salt, pepper, and spices, but it is often the grilling process that imparts the majority of the flavor. Grilling or roasting. The meat is skewered or placed directly on a grill over an open flame, charcoal, or wood. It's cooked slowly and patiently being turned regularly to ensure even cooking and to develop a delicious charred exterior. Seasoning. The meat is typically seasoned with salt and sometimes served with a side of dipping sauce or spice mix. Serving and enjoyment. Nyama choma is typically served hot and can be enjoyed in various ways. Standalone dish. It is often served as a standalone dish, with portions of grilled meat arranged on a platter. Accompaniments. Nyama choma is frequently accompanied by side dishes such as kachumbari, a tomato and onion salad, ugali, a maize porridge, or chapati, flatbread. Sauces. It is commonly served with a variety of sauces, including pili pili, spicy chili sauce, or a simple mixture of lime juice, salt, and chili flakes. Garnishes. Garnishes like fresh herbs or sliced onions may be added for additional flavor and freshness. Cultural significance. Nyama Choma has cultural significance as a beloved social dish in East Africa. It's often prepared and enjoyed at social gatherings, celebrations, and communal feasts, bringing people together to share food and stories. The grilling process, with its enticing aroma and flavorful results, is an art form in itself and adds to the overall enjoyment of the dish. Whether enjoyed at a local market, a roadside grill, or during a family gathering, Nyama Choma captures the essence of East African culinary traditions and communal dining.